We lighten up the morning, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. OMG in the morning. Person or a politically driven individual or somebody unpatriotic? No, it does not. I don't. I always wonder why people immediately cast off someone who has legitimate concerns about the management of public resources as being negative and unpatriotic. We have to be bigger than that and realize that politics has to do with the management of public resources. And so it is well within our right to ask these questions that you've been asking this morning. What are we doing? Instead of getting defensive, come on on OMG and say, listen, this is what we're doing. This is the plan that we have. Go on the different radio stations. Let people know. People are asking because they don't know. Don't take offense to it. Redouble your effort. You know? Anyway, that's my contribution this morning. All right, thanks for calling. You know, I'm not politically aff- affiliated with any party. I, as I say it all the time, a I'm a swing voter. And I'm asking these Me questions. Too. I'm asking these questions because I genuinely... Where is really? That's my, <laughs> that's my, I feel like there's a wall and then there's a bit outside of it. I don't understand. Good morning, God of your life. Good morning, good morning, big, 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 and uh, uh, baby doll. I thought you would name me here again, and um, there you go. Yeah. I couldn't agree with that, la- more with that last caller. And um, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's Lavon, it was Lavon, although she didn't identify who she is. Why, if, why, why are we afraid to talk about politics? And politics have us doing all kinds of nonsense, cheating ourselves. Making us political prostitutes and we, we are afraid to talk about politics? If so, I want you to check out the meaning of politics. Google what is politics all about. And, and tell me if it is not the right for all of us once we ain't talking anything stupid or what. Not to be concerned or not to be talking about the politics of our country. Listen, you have some guys, like, <laughs> I was listening to, um, I was listening to a commentator there this morning, and who said that, what well, he's not talking about politics in this time? Great Britain, the United States of America, what are they talking? What are they talking? You know, this country to me is like a special country. With some real dundo heads, as they would say. Why can't we be open? Look, for the longest while, I'm, people are calling, well, I uh, in particular calling for the opposition and the government to sit down as civilized people, big people, and so on. And, I mean, change the look for us, man. Let us see that we can unite, whether you are ULP or NDP or whichever other party. Let's present something new, a new face to the country, no man. Huh? And as the government, as the ruling regime, I think it is incumbent upon you to do all in your effort. That will help you to win the election very easy if people see that you're really reaching out to the opposition and the opposition is not bothering you. No one man is an island. No one, and we, we are a plural country, so maybe that's why they're behaving like that. Let us deal with the real issue that matters all of us, that concerns all of us. This ain't no time to be beating your chest, thumping your chest, and, you know, come on. We all are in this together, but the rhetoric is very cheap, eh? The rhetoric is very cheap. And like the Prime Minister loves to say, I, I, I'm using that as a real, um, you know, weapon. None of us better than, you know, you ain't better than me and I ain't better than you. I'm using that as a real weapon. But yet, when you listen to the, when you listen to the sarcasm and all of that, you know, this is just pure rhetoric. All of us are in this together. Right, Have a good morning. Okay, so we're going to just go through. Um, mm-hmm. What's happening in the other islands? Right. Because we, we maybe we don't know. Maybe. So I'm, I'm just going to name a few things because there's a lot going on in, in a lot of different islands. 
So I'll go to Grenada first. That's where I lived for a bit, right. and that's you know I get right. a lot of information from Grenada. Right. So we know that they had given the students of the St. George's University the opportunity to return home. We saw a massive number of them taking that option and they would have returned home. This is maybe since over a week ago. About more than a week ago. Right, more than a almost, week ago. maybe almost two weeks. Right. They have already closed their schools a long time ago, even before, because they've recorded their first case. Right. So the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister has restricted the opening of bars, restaurants. He also released, I'm looking for it here. When did this happen? When he, when he made these restrictions? I think he, I think he um, restricted those things maybe a, about a week ago or okay. so, right? Okay. He also released an emergency economic stimulus plan. Oh, I think I've got that. Right. So they I have reductions on electricity bills, a um, number of things. They're, they're putting money towards certain things, etc. Mm. Too much to go through at this time. Um, he also advised against the use of public transportation. And they've even now had some routes that are suspended from using public transportation. So he's actually encouraging people to stay indoors and they close off their borders as well okay okay um in barbados we know that well, barbados be, be, before before you go before you move from from grenada i'm seeing here um adjust the small hotel hotelers facility at the grenada development bank to support all hotelers by injecting an addition additional seven million us dollars to facilitate this that's one two uh, remember, Grenada, according to some, Grenada don't have any case. No, well, they have one. Now. I know, I know, I know. And this is the excuse that was being used, right? And and other islands who are doing it, they've got more cases than us. But Grenada have one like us, all right? This information came out. In Grenada, for COVID-19 COVID economic stimulus plan, work with the NIS to provide unemployment benefit support due to the fallout of this pandemic initially estimated at 10 million dollars that's another two another one three um encourage the trade union movement to work with the business community to support the use of vacation you leaves as a first option in the event of the business having skeleton staff that's three four suspend the two percent increase to in nis payment for the period Five, expand the public sector investment programs in an effort to boost employment at the community level. Six, follow all necessary exemption protocol to provide insensitives to private labs and medical facilities procuring items to support the fight against COVID-19. Seven, suspend the monthly advance payment on corporate income tax for the period. In Grenada, they, they only have one case like us. Expand the small business soft lending facility at the Grenada Development Bank by, the, by an additional $5 million. Another one, finance, financial institutions have also agreed in principle to provide a moratorium on principal and interest payment in their, in, in their clients on condition, or to their clients on, on condition for the period of three months in question in the first instant. Barbados doing six months. Another one, government commits to ensuring that the cost of electricity will be reduced by 30% for the months of April, March, April, May, June. In the first instance, to all consumers, all, not just business, but homeowners as well. This will not apply to a few companies that have special concession arrangements. And the list goes on and on, it says, increase farm labor support, to immediately boost agriculture productions island-wide. Government is also given con consideration to support for farmers and fisher exporters and fish exporters who have recently been affected as a result of the international travel restriction. And it goes on and on. Suspend installment payment on the annual stamp tax for the period. Another one, place on the price control list certain cleaning items to prevent price gouging at this time this will incur, include but not limited to hand sanitizers bleach hydrogen peroxide and hand soap 
another one provide 20 million ec dollars worth of payroll support to the hoteliers restaurants bars small travel agencies and income support to public buses taxi drivers travel vendors another identify hospitality based industries and businesses and it goes on and on and on and on but we, we, we're doing what's trending this morning quickly and then we got the hammer coming up yeah let's take a commercial break we come right back we know we get some licks with this but that's all right that's all right we love you love you my comrade i love you i love you here's some lumber here's some galvanize here's some cement don't worry about we help i love you I love you, my comrade. Let's take a break and come right back. And I'll be told, oh, your station is an NDP station. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. One zero six nine boom. 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 Entertainment Evolve, the trends, hype, and stories burning up social media and entertainment. <laughs> So it's time for what's trending Monday morning. Corona is at the top of the list, and you know, um, Jamaica always have their things going. Still, nothing stops reggae music. So, in the international reggae and world music awards, there, there were some people that cop some awards over the weekend. There, um, Buju Banton was a big winner as he copped the Marcus Garvey. Award. Buju also captured um, an award for being one of the most influential artists with some of his reggae releases. Coffee won. Yeah, best I was gonna ask. So he came this. up against Coffee. Coffee. Coffee was uh, was nominated as well. Yeah. Nine nine nominations. She had a six. Some yeah, quite a lot. Yeah, nine. I, I don't know nine. the exact number. I had to go yeah. to my laptop to get the exact number. I just wanna go through the the winners. Uh, Coffee won best female vocalist and best song for toast best album for raptia best music video for toast as well boy they get some lash for this tour because they say shensi i should have won something other winners included entertainer of the year popcorn recording artist of the year vibes cartel best vocalist conix best gospel song jermaine edwards Best Male DJ, Vibes Cartel. Best Female DJ, Spice. Best New Entertainer, Chronic Law. Veteran was uh, Freddie McGregor, was named Most Consistent Entertainer. Stone Love was voted Best Song System. And Ding Dong, Ravers Cleavers, Dancing Ding Dong for Most Outstanding Dance Group. Jamaica got it going on. People real lash out though. The real lasha because they say how oh, Shensi haven't won anything and um I think that they're judging it wrong. Awards usually reflect from the year past, you know. So the success of Shensia's uh, latest release would come for 2021, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which right. they would judge the success of this year. So that's what's going on in Jamaica. Hmm. In Trinidad, everything is locked down. Everything, everything, really? everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't entertain and function like that. Everything. What is it? Lockdown. What is that? Lockdown, mean? lockdown, 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 lockdown. You know. Lockdown. Total. The army passing around in jeeps making sure that there's no gatherings, no clubs opening. All promoters call off all events. Lockdown. Total. By the way, it, we not, we, it's important that we let you know that up to this morning, there are 50 cases of coronavirus in Trinidad. Mm-hmm. Okay? 50. And Five zero. The next press conference would be at 2 p.m. today, so, you know. And we'll also, of as of midnight time. last night, the airport in Trinidad has been closed. Yep. So, too, is, is, is in Grenada. The airport in Grenada is closed as well, too. Everybody. BVI as so. well. <laughs> BVI. BVI as well, too. Yes, I heard... Even nationals. Eh? Yeah, I heard, no I heard <laughs> the Prime Minister of, of Grenada saying in a press conference yesterday. That's why I didn't get to listen to Mr. Weeks yesterday, because I listened to a, a live 
he sent the press conference by the Prime Minister of Grenada, which he was speaking to the nation, and he said that the reason why he has taken this bold move to shut off incoming flights into Grenada is because he don't want to put additional strain on the health system of Grenada, and that the resources of the health system in Grenada is for the people of Grenada, mm -hmm. and at this point, they will not be able to take on any more, and his focus is on the people of Grenada. With one case, one case, mm -hmm. one case. Besides that, um, a lot of celebrities, rappers, and uh, different organizations, they're actually starting to pool together their resources to assist with the strain in their respective countries with um, what's happening. One point yeah. something million yeah. dollars to what, Barbados. What's happening with the economy and the status of yeah, people skinny that problem, can't take care and, and, and Kevin Little. We all, come on, all, so, put something in the kitty now, man. You know, anything we'll do right now. At, at this time, we'd like everybody to not just pick up the trends as the fashion and whatnot, but pick up the trend of giving as well. Yeah, man, put something you know, in the kitty. Um, we can do it. A lot of DJs, artists, and otherwise that have no stages to perform on, they start in their own quarantine concerts from the bedrooms, yep, seen that. the yeah, drawing seen that. rooms, seen that. you know. I have a little mix I've deep to do too, but you know, I just waited on the time. And stuff and really? Yeah, 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 you know, so you, you just have the, the, the watching party, the viewing party. Scratch I, as well. I, I saw mm -hmm. something with um, this guy. Keep talking. I was just, um, uh, DJ Outcast has one. Mm -hmm. yeah. quite, quite a lot of people have. This you know? guy, the, the, the um, producer, actor. What's his name now? No? Oh my goodness. Big, big guy. Producer, big, actor. Black guy. Black I only guy. know about Kevin Hart. No, no, no. Oh, I just saw him. Well, so Kevin Hart is on fire. Oh, so, yeah. Um, but he had the virus, right? He tested yeah, yeah, positive. Yeah, he tested. And Tyler, he Pe it, Tyler it was Perry. Tyler, Tyler Perry. Perry. Yes, he started something that is trending a lot right now. We're gonna play a little bit of it before we get Jerry. Mm -hmm. Really, really amazing indeed. It's it's so it's so it's so interesting. J Jerry, buddy, hold on, hang on, hang on. And then go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Sh should we play, play a bit of it now? Well, or you go ahead. Yeah, yeah. It's up to you. What's up? Yeah, you had to, you had to plug up the device, plug it up, plug it up. Oh, this is Tyra Penny yesterday. This is, uh, that. In his hand, it's a challenge. The challenge. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let's try to play it back a little bit. How do I, how do I get it back? Ah, uh, it's all your fault, you know. Start it over. Give me back on music. How do I start it over? Man, there's a next whack challenge happening to her. I see a number of challenges. I see some take a shot, something, yes, um, uh, something kickball, something, some challenge. How many kicks you could? Uh, but this one by Tara Penn is really amazing. I'm what sorry. is it? Oh, no, Have you fine. seen Ellen DeGeneres' page as well? She's no, what did she calling do? everybody. <laughs> She's calling all her celebrity friends and having conversations about absolutely nothing. Really? Yeah, and just I mean, a lot of persons they're trying to light up to, You know, make light of of the fact that they're on lockdown. Mm -hmm. Boy, there's a challenge where people just put something flammable in their mouth. Okay. And no, that, that, that's a bit no, a lighter. Okay, I don't approve okay. of that challenge okay. at all. But don't, don't even talk about it then. Don't, don't I just tell it. people to, to stay away from that challenge. Don't think it's necessary. Someone caught the hair on fire. Anyway, we'll bring the therapy challenge after after 9 o'clock. Um, are you finished? Yeah, I'm not. Alright, let's take a out where we'll bring in Jerry. That? Alright, and now he's calling now? No, let's, let's take us out. All right, so that's where we wrap things up here on Watch Trending. Coming up shortly, we've got a call with Jerry George. Can you just run the ad? One oh six nine, boom. Straight up, real talk, unfiltered, and in your in face. Your face. Jerry George on Boom 106. So right now we're waiting on a call from... Oh, okay. I bet you this not is not waiting. him. I bet you this is not him. Go ahead. Be disappointed. Go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. I'm not talking to no negative body. <laughs> He, he threw that for you. That, that's what that's, that's what done. That's what done. That's what done. With negative people in St. Vincent. <laughs> Good morning, folks. Morning. Jerry, how are you? How was your weekend? Uh, to be honest with you, I am, I am not in a good place this morning. I saw some the, the latest information on this virus, and I'm not telling all you no joke. This thing is scary beyond measure and what bothers me the most 
is the Vincentian response to this. I hear you all talking about um, who get award Saturday night and ill-advised mm-hmm. session that was on Saturday night. When everybody else is talking about social distancing, St. Vincent is boasting about having public events. Something is wrong with us, you know. Something is wrong with us. Yesterday, the Minister of Health sends around different people to different churches to read a six days message that he thinks was so important. When everybody else is saying, stay home. Folks, we're not ready, you know. We have not taken this matter seriously enough. While, he, the, when, 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 while the minister is having people in all different churches reading the thing, the CMO is on radio, te- radio telling people about social distancing. Something, something is totally wrong about this picture. And she is absolutely right. Every, in fact, you all know it. In, in communities, they have locked down communities. First of all, they disconnect the countries from air travel, and then they lock down communities. They're telling you cannot leave your house unless you're going for gas or you're going to the, to the grocery or the pharmacy, and you have to show proof of it. But we're carrying on like if even the Prime Minister, in, in, I, I read in, in, in the social front page, is talking about, oh, we're not calling off carnival yet. Olympics, call off. What is wrong with us? When, when are we going to get serious? When? And of all the leaders in this region, Prime Minister Gonzalez has not addressed this nation on this issue yet. And I suspect that is why nobody is taking it seriously. I suspect that is why people are not taking it seriously. But if we think this is a joke, let us continue to fool around. This is the worst thing that has ever happened to this civilization, and maybe that is why we ain't getting it. You understand? That is probably why we're not getting it. You see the extent to which they have gone? That at this stage in our existence, all countries are like islands. Everybody disconnected from everybody else. But we care not like if nothing happens. We still have them set put on, parties put on, you know, and all the rest of it because maybe we know better. Maybe we know better. I saw um, parliamentarian Leacock talked about 2,000 people, everybody wants to politicize it, but he's right. He's absolutely right. This is not politics. This is reality now, folks. This matter is deadly serious. And the sooner we understand that we need to take that mindset and put it in place, it's the better for us. The sooner we get that there, the next two weeks are going to be something else because we might certainly find the revelations that we, we would hope not to see. But we, we shouldn't have to be there. When every other prime minister in this region has spoken to their nation about this thing, we are still waiting to hear Prime Minister Gonzalez. But lumber, cement, and gas, and I is going about it, but that's the most important thing. Maybe we're planning to make coffins with them, with them lumber. So we need to get them into the district fast. Maybe that's what the intention is. But this is no time to fool around. And this is no time for pretty talk and nice talk. This is straight up. I'm sorry. We, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. You sending off people into, into mass gatherings over the weekend because you have some, some, some message you want them to take and read. Something that everybody could hear on the radio. Because, because you want to prove the school points, political points. Really? Goodness gracious me. W- what is wrong with us, man? Haven't we understood the seriousness of this thing yet? When are we going to understand the seriousness of what is upon us? When? When people start to drop dead? Have you heard what is happening in Spain? Have you heard what is happening in, in, in Italy? You know what they're saying? That the United Kingdom is two weeks behind what is happening in Spain and Italy because they didn't take action when they should. Do you realize that every single case basically we have had in this region has come out of England, the UK? When are we going to get it, folks? When? This fool around has to stop, eh? People's lives are in danger. This whole nation is at risk. Because either somebody doesn't want to take responsibility and take charge, 
or we don't understand the seriousness of what we're dealing with. And are we going to, to understand when people start to drop dead? Next slide. Is it then we're going to pay attention? This has never happened. The world has literally disconnected folks. Do you get it? Last night, Trinidad pulled the plug. Everywhere has pulled the plug. No more travel, no more nothing. Because that is the only way they see to stop this thing. And in some instances, it might be too late. But we're fooling around. Listen, folks. Unless there's something you want to ask, I think I'd better... Jerry, uh, yes, I have a question. You said um, in the beginning of your commentary that you saw some new information about the virus. Yes, there's, there's new information about the virus out there. There's information that says, for example, that um, the, uh, the virus can take away your taste buds and all that kind of thing, your ability to smell. We haven't seen and understood what this virus is doing yet, you know. But we care now, like, happy good, lucky, like if nothing happened. This business of, of people um, staying out of circulation and, uh, and stuff like that is very important. We shouldn't have to wait until this post upon us. You see what's happening in the United States? They're shutting people down. They have mobilized army resources to shut down communities. Are we going to wait until we get there? Have we seen how fast this thing has moved? These islands don't have the capacity to deal with it. You don't. But what? We continue like if, you know, uh, like nobody business. Uh, uh, Lee Cox said, talked about, about this thing. Everybody wants to look at it from a political perspective. But he's right. He's absolutely right. Because everything we see, we can only see through the prism of politics. Even when people's lives are at stake. And some things only matter when certain people speak it in our society. Let's continue to be foolish. This is a deadly, serious matter. Has any of you ever lived where the world has literally disconnected itself from each other? In, in, um, in Italy, they've, been, they've asked the U.S. for help. There's so many people lined up dead. Spain is struggling with the same thing, and they're saying that the U.K. is going to end up there. And we did talk and foolishness and care like if nothing happened. Have a good day, folks. Jerry, I have another question. Sorry, and then you oh, can you leave, sorry, right? Sorry. Oh, you want to um, on you to, uh, <laughs> we we are being told that persons from the EU, the UK, and US are going to be asked to self quarantine from today. Once you enter Saint Vincent and the Grenadines from those territories, you're going to be asked to self quarantine today. What's your take on this self quarantine situation? That self quarantine thing is not working. You have, for, let, let, let me illustrate this, right? You had some students and parents and so on who went to Guadalupe, I think it was, I'm asking one of them, for a school trip, or to high school. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Right. They, when, well, they had to, they cut the trip short and sent them back. And basically they said to people to self-quarantine, people jump up and down tongue. But we can't do anything, you know why we can't do anything about enforcing it? Because we have no facility. When we should have gone ahead and prepared the facility up in, um, what's the name again? Ivisham. Ivisham. No, for political reasons, we backed off of it. We're now trying to build something. Well, we, we can't say, Jerry, it is not fair to say it's for political reasons, because we don't know that for a fact. The Ministry of Health is the one that made the decision, so we can't, it's not fair to say it's for political reasons. You could not say so. I said it. You, you could say. You could say. Yes, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm standing by it. I'm not backing away from it. I'm standing by it. It's for political reasons that we pulled out of that, um, that, that thing. You could be nice. I'm talking it like it is. Okay? And today, we're trying to build something when we should have had something built. And something ready to go. We're now trying to build it. And therefore, it is very difficult to quarantine people and to put people... We don't have any, we don't have any place to put it. I just, I, I just got an alert from CNN, which I'm, I'm registered to on this app. You're breaking up. You got an alert from? From CNN. Hold on. Let me just see if I can pull it exactly the way it was said. Uh, oh, boy. Ooh. 
Surgeon General warned that this week it's going to get bad. Uh, this is in the United States. It just came literally mm -hmm. half a sec, half a minute ago. I'm trying to pull the exact story mm -hmm. and, and yeah. to get your um, standby, okay? Um, anyway, I, I'll, I'll find, I'll find the, the, the full story. I touched mm -hmm. it and it, it took me to somewhere else. But mm -hmm. basically the story, the, the, the heading says, Surgeon General warned that this week it's going to get bad. Yes, it's going to get bad. That we've never seen. Um, I'm trying the to... The next two yeah. weeks, it's going to be really bad. Bing, why do you think the world has disconnected itself? Last night, Trinidad shut down flights. Barbados, and, and, and some of us are playing this, this, this game as if we don't want to. Where do you think the world has disconnected? Because this matter is serious. This matter is deadly serious. And we, we have people going around um, about their business here like if nothing happened. Because nobody has spoken up to it. Have we heard Prime Minister Gonsalves speak to the nation on this issue yet? Have we? No. Distributing lumber gas and energy cement is more important. You think this is a joke? This is not a joke. This time we get serious in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This is not a joke. We are facing something that this civilization has never had to deal with. In the past, when you had plagues and stuff, they were quarantined, they, were, they, 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 they stayed within certain geographic areas because there was not as much transportation. Why well, do you think they have shut down all the transportation? Last night at midnight, Trinidad closed the airport, Ghana closed it, Barbados, everybody is shutting down because that's the only way they see possible now to stop this thing from going around. Do we get it? Come on, man. Come on. Okay, I found the story. Oh, gosh, I just went again. <laughs> it's, your fault. it's your fault, it's your fault, Jerry. It's your fault, it's your fault, it's your fault. It's story. No, no, no. It's, you know, these these smartphones, that's when they touch something. Yeah. Uh, into thing. I'll, I'll find it and I'll, and I'll pull it. About the Surgeon General warning this morning um, to, to, to the world. I'll find it and I'll, and I'll bring it. In. To okay. the world, eh? Yeah, to the world. And if you went on things down to this, like if nothing happened. Oh, well, we're not part of the world, apparently. No, I'm clearly not part of the world. It's but if you haven't have heard the Prime Minister speak to this issue, what do you think people do? This is a matter so serious. Every other Prime Minister in the region has spoken to it. Oh, Prime Minister Gonsalves, I, I hear something. What am I speaking about it tomorrow in Parliament? Really? Before Grenada had one case, the Prime Minister and all the, all the functionaries in Grenada had already spoken to the issue. We have had a case oh no, no, and we still, like, it's nothing going to happen. This is time for leadership. Jared, this is do, tough times. Do you think that because we've managed to just have that one case and it seems to oh, have been that. contained that... Oh, we know that. Well, I'm, I'm asking you, Is it? do you think that that's the reason why people kind of just seem to be going yeah, about their business as normal? Explained, we haven't explained to people what their, par their parents of one case seems to mean. What they have proven, whether it is in Spain or Italy or where, unless you are continually testing, you don't know. When we want to find out if somebody is infected, we have to send our stuff to Trinidad and wait for 40, 24 to 48 hours for it to come back. In the meantime, we don't know. Those students and stuff who went off to Guadalupe Martinique, wherever it was last couple of weeks, they are mixing in the population. We don't know what is happening out there. Wendy. It's the only people who have the ability to test on the fly that have any sense of where they really are. That's what we need to understand. But Jerry. Jerry. Yeah, well, yeah, go when, ahead, yeah. When the students came back, right, and they said to have been self quarantined, they would have been in a household? Yeah. What about households? Concerning the same they question Diego asked. Mm -hmm. Did, were they sent to quarantine immediately or did they go to school, etc., when they came in before they were told to quarantine? That's a very good question. I'm not sure of the actual logistical side of it. But what I do know is that um, 
some were told, it seems that there were two sets of information from, from what I am gathering, mm-hmm. that some people were told, oh, it's okay, and some were told to stay home. The end result is, we, are, we, we don't know yet what is happening. Again, because until somebody uh, manifests in a particular way, that's the only how we are sending off the test. Because we don't have the testing resources, and you can't test every single um, appearance that there might be. And that is why we're in this, we're in this zone of, Jerry, of doubt. Jerry, yes, some, someone, is, someone on the WhatsApp is suggesting that the parents of one of these students had to go home from work, yes. seeing that they're supposed to be in quarantine and yes, not reporting well. to work because uh, their daughter came in from um, this trip. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's what I'm saying. We, we, we have been managing this thing in, in, in a fashion as if we don't know. Hmm. Yesterday, yesterday on a radio program, and, and, and I, I, I feel it for, for, for the CMO, yesterday on a radio program, uh, which happens around midday, the chief medical officer is talking about this whole question of people basically hmm. staying put. But at the same time, the minister has sent people off into churches to read a message that he wants them to send. When we should be discouraging all that kind of public gathering at this stage, especially knowing we lack resources, we should be discouraging that. But no, some people see every opportunity to make a political statement of one way or the other. And, and at the same time, exposed to the nation. The chief medical officer, who is the person with the training and, as far as I'm concerned, the authority on issues like these, is on radio, saying to people, calm down, uh, you know, we need to treat this one way. But we're sending people into congregations because we have a message that we say must come from the minister. Listen, we're playing the fool. That's what we're doing. This matter is the most serious matter this civilization has ever faced. Eh? Let us understand that. Let us understand the seriousness of what this is. Have you ever seen the world disconnected itself from, from country from country? Have you ever seen people park a plane because they don't want to carry them away? Have you ever seen that happen before? No. Therefore, we need to take a, a concomitant approach to the seriousness of the situation and stop playing the fool. All right, Jerry. Thank you very much. We're out of time. Straight up? Yep. Straight up. One oh six nine boom. 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 Um, the latest update on the coronavirus cases top three hundred and forty one thousand globally. Hmm? More than seven hundred and fifty million people across India are under lockdown. Global stocks, U.S. features plunge again today. U.S. Senator, senators are continuing to negotiate on a massive stimulus package. Canada said it will not send athletes to the 2020 Olympic. Australia said athletes should prepare for the Tokyo Games in 2021. New York City Hospital will only get through this week without more supply made mayor said i want to get to the story with the surgeon general which i was uh, i let me, let me find it i'm gonna bring it because i think it's relevant at this time to put things into perspective oh by the way i, I saw a story just came out on on the cnn thing as well saying mcdonald's and nando's shut down all their uk restaurants even their takeout I think Sandals is closing as well. In yes, all the, all, all the uh, yes. But you know, you know, there are those who will say we're spreading hysteria. Okay. <laughs> there, there are those who will say that. And I want to get to something that Major Lee Cock would have said uh, on the weekend. I think is last Friday. I'm we'll gonna get to that. Um, Spain. I'm reading from the CNN app. Okay, which are coming out every minute. Spain expects outbreaks to peak as soon as Wednesday. Uh, hang on, serious, 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 please. Corona 
Rage is out of control. It's another story. There are now more than 34,000 US corona cases and 414 deaths. But there's one with the Surgeon General speaking to the world this morning. I'll find it, don't worry. And I would like to also add that the UK has recorded an 18 year old one eight? dying. One eight? Yes. You sure about that? I I read it. Wow. That put things into another perspective there because we we've been I just can't seem to find every time I'm ready to bring this and story. I also sent you um, a clip where the the director of who was you know sending a message to the young people. You know, telling them, you know, listen, you're you're not invincible. I know yes. that the young yes. people feel like yes. they're invincible and I felt like his message was so important because I think a lot of that has been going on where some people just feel like because they're not prone, that is just like, oh, okay, it's, it's fine, I don't mind. When some people feel as if they're <laughs> not prone because sickness has no age, health issues has no age, someone doesn't know that they have something unless they check themselves and get diagnosed for. So yeah. there are certain things that develop at a, a young age that you probably didn't know you have. And it would last you. Yeah. And everybody's bodies react differently different, to different, different things. things. A cold might be a walk in the park for you. For me, it might make me feel like Living a truck yeah. ran me over. And I think people are missing the point where those things are concerned. They don't really seem, or maybe they just don't care. I, I really, I don't know. All right, I, I can't seem to find this damn thing again. What, what but I'll is find it? Where you got it's, it from? It's, CNN? Um, CNN, yeah, okay. on, on the old app. <laughs> it says US Surgeon General warned this week is going to get bad as hospitals struggle to keep up with coronavirus cases across the world. Come down. Help the uh, man, man later. Help them out. Help them out. <laughs> um, but, but, but on Friday, a recording came out. Well, not a recording. Apparently, Major Leacock called into his party. Good morning, caller. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My good morning. How are you doing? Yes, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. I want to say something. Maybe you could respond to this as well. Sure. Too. Sure. Last Friday, apparently, Major Leacock made public pronouncement about what may happen. I don't know if it's me or what can happen to St. Vincent Dan and the In which he said that up to, is it 50,000 people? Can, yes, can be affected by this coronavirus issue and some 2,000 persons will lose their lives in St. Vincent and the Grandings with regards to this coronavirus thing. What's your take on this caller? Well, Bing, I, I wasn't planning on calling in today, but I listened to Jerry and Jerry's right on the money, okay? This thing is serious. And I'm, I'm, I'm no pun intended, but this thing is as serious as a heart attack. I live in New York. I live in one of the most technologically, economically developed countries in the world. And we were caught flat-footed because our powers that be or the powers that were did not take this thing seriously in the beginning. Now, you talk about that thing, and, and, I, and I know they're trying to lynch Major Leacock for saying what he said, but here is, here is an example of how projections are used. L yesterday, our governor, Andrew Cuomo, said to the people of New York that they are projecting, if this thing continues the way it is, they are projecting that 40 to 80 percent of the New York, the population of New York, which is approximately 19 million. So you're talking about approximately 8 to 15 million people would become infected. You don't hear anybody in New York trying to lynch Andrew Cuomo, the governor, because he's trying to be real with us. Bing, this thing is new. There's a reason why it is called COVID-19. It is the 2019 version of the coronavirus. The coronavirus has been with us for a very long time. But this is something new. It is so new that they have to constantly revise 
what they're saying to us, the WHO and the CDC, for example. Remember I said the other day that at first you could not, they were saying that you could not get it if you were not, if you were asymptomatic. Yeah. Now you can get, you can spread it if you are asymptomatic. Now they're saying that it can be spread in an aerosolized fashion by droplets and so on. Before they were saying that it was only two surface contact. Now, they are slowly revising the fact that elderly people are the ones who are the most fatalities. We are seeing younger and younger people dying. This is so new. And it, it irks me, Bing, when I hear people still comparing this thing to the flu. The flu has been with us for millennia. But this is a brand new version of the coronavirus. And I'm appealing, the reason why I'm calling Bing is that I'm appealing to my fellow Vincentians. Because there are people who should know better. There are people who have um, a significant amount of following, I hope. Especially your friend on the Friday night program who was still minimizing this thing. And my fellow Vincentians, if you follow people like that, if you minimize the deadliness of this coronavirus, this COVID-19 pandemic. You do it at your own peril. Okay. You know, follow the guidelines. I don't understand. I, I mean, I, I don't get this. Why, our, why are our borders still open? Cuba just shut down their tourism industry. I wonder if the prime minister is going to follow Cuba. I mean, stop playing Russian roulette with the lives of Vincentians. Bing, again, New York. It's like a ghost town. Because the, 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 our political officials have seen how deadly serious this thing is and how fast it is spreading. Right? There is, this thing is so new, there are no treatments available, official treatments available. There, there's not even a vaccine. <laughs> so they have taken the unprecedented step of shutting down the city of New York, one of the greatest tourist destinations in the world, one of the greatest shopping and business centers in the world. And we have been caught flat-footed. New York is on the brink of a catastrophe right now because we are ill-prepared. What do you think would happen if this thing gets out of control in St. Vincent and the Grenadines? Well, the, the spokesperson for the ULP is saying that the, the flu is, is more deadly than this. And we are, we are being, we're spreading it still. Anyway, I want to see if I can touch base with Major Leacock. I don't know. I want to sure. reach out to him and see if I can get him, okay? But, but, but keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all three of you, you and Daniel and Diego, for keeping this on the front burner. Blessings to my fellow Vincentians. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Carla. I, I don't know. Have you heard this statement by, by Major Leacock? I, I've seen that on social media. He's getting quite a whipping yes. um, for this statement. What, what would be interesting is why would Major Leacock make this statement? Did, does he have inside information? Um, you know, is this in something that I, I don't know? Or if it's just something that that he came up with, is it something that he can he came up with? Major Leacock, it would be good if if we can we can have a talk with you this morning. Um, please four five one one zero six nine, Major. If you can call us and 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 I want to hear from you. Why would you make that statement? Those statements that you made, which half of the country, well, fifty thousand people will be affected. There's a difference affected and inf infected. You say affected. And up to 2,000 people will die in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. What, what would trigger that? While we await his call, we want to read the number again. Just Yeah, it's 4511069. Maybe I should call him. Maybe you should. Yeah. I just want to good. read a small clip while you're doing that, okay? Sure. Emma, a 12-year-old girl, is fighting for her life in an Atlantic hospital after testing positive for the coronavirus, according to family members. Emma had no pre-existing condition. But the person you have called is out. 12 years. 12 old. years. Well, <laughs> I'm trying to, if you hear the phone is ringing there, that's me trying to reach out to Major Leacock. Um, let's see if I can get him. 
Um, I'm sorry, but the mm-hmm. person... Going to voicemail. Yeah. Why, why would Major say this? Does he have information we don't have? Is there something that he knows that we don't know? 2,000 people will die, Major said. 50,000 people will be affected. Why? I'm sorry, but the person you... Okay, not getting him. That's me trying to reach out to him there, to see if I can get him. Uh, okay, so... Uh, so the Surgeon General this morning warned that this week it's going to get bad. He said, the war against COVID virus has intensified across the world and more and more people have been affected. He's saying, we really, really need everyone to stay at home. I think that there are a lot of people who are doing the right things, but we are finding out a lot of people think this can't happen to them that's what the surgeon general is saying uh, of course he gave figures um infected in, in 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 america he said that the deployment comes more than 100 million people in at least eight states face orders from their governors to stay home to curb the spread of the virus 100 million people 100 and you know it went on giving some more chilling information let's go to the lines good morning caller your life hello i only can't find out if this virus is an airborne because if you lock people in it's like a hurricane that it will go away after time when you lock in what, what do you say, what you say locked in? What exactly do you mean? What you say okay, then, you're saying that everybody has to be like a curfew then, locking your house away from this, wait until the storm pass. So the hurricane is like a storm that you have to lock in and, and then let it pass by. Okay, let, 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 let me... Want to know. Okay. So you talk to me after. Okay, good. Um, what, what we are saying is that there are a number of governments around us, in Grenada, in Barbados, in St. Lucia, in Trinidad, in, in Jamaica, in St. Kitts, I'm um, always saying to people to, to limit. limit the amount of movement or the amount of contact you make with people because this virus is spread by contact and because it's airborne, meaning that it's in the air. If someone in this room have got the virus, and they, cough, and they cough or sneeze, or sneeze it's in the air and the particles droplets. can land on, on yes. surfaces or on someone else okay. and once they touch that and then touch I think we got Major Leacock on the line Major, you're, you're live on the radio I was calling you from this number um, to see if I can get you on air good morning good morning good morning, you're live on the radio Major and I can't even greet you as the original Batman this morning because <laughs> you've, been a good ma- you've been a good man. I am being a decent, upstanding citizen. Major, um, yes. l- let me g- jump straight into it quickly. Um, b- by the way, uh, my, my co-host Baby Doll is also morning, with us. Good morning, good yeah. morning. Yeah. Major, last Friday I've heard a recording going around on social media of you making certain pronouncements on the New Times program last Friday in which you've said, and correct me if, I, if I'm quoting you wrong, that 50,000 people in St. Vincent and the Grenadines will be affected yeah. and 2,000 people will die. Did I misquote you? Um, no, it's not that you misquote. You, you don't have the context. Okay, well, put it in so, context for me. Because what happens there, Bing, is that for political mischief, the, my statement was deliberately truncated, so people are only getting a song bite of what I said. So when I came on air last Friday, thing, it, I came because I was stopped in my driving by virtually one of the most senior medical practitioners in this country by years and by dint of practice, who said that he was obliged to give to me as a public policymaker information that must be disseminated to the public. And he indicated to me a number of things, but I want to repeat one of them being quickly. First of all, he said it's, it's for good reason why the World Health Organization was so slow and taking the time in declaring this coronavirus a pandemic. Because it has, because it has significance. And 
In the conversation, Bing, I said to him, I want a soap pandemic to mean worldwide. This is all over the world. And he said, that part of your interpretation is correct. But it also means that millions will die. So that's the two things that need to be understood in that message from the World Health Organization. That the things all over the world and that millions would die. And he said, as a medical practitioner and listening and looking at the modeling and what it was saying, his estimates were that a low of three of 30,000 incidents would be affected. A low. And it could be as high as 50,000, nearly half of St. Vincent. He used a figure of 100,000 incidents. So that's what he had, a low of 30 and 50. And did, and he he said, did he say affected or infected? Affected. Affected, affected infected. which is different affected. than infected. Well, affected, infected. Well, I leave the semantics for you. I'm not going there. But that's what he said. And that in his belief, 2,000 incidents will die. Maybe I should have taken the insurance to say, may die. <laughs> Only time will tell the significance of that. But he needed for that to be said. He even referenced an earlier message that he had heard, which seemed to downplay what we were facing. And he wanted that corrected as urgently as possible. So against that background, I do two things. The immediate thing was to speak to my leader of the political party and ask him to stop whatever he was doing now and go to the office of that medical practitioner and get a full brief so that he could address the matter in even greater detail that I was communicating because I didn't want to be seen to be jumping ahead. Are you with me? I'm with you. I have to assume that that was done because I know my, my political leader had a full plate as well. So what will happen there, I can't take responsibility. But he entrusted me to do that for him, not to pass it on. And I went on radio, radio immediately and communicated that to St. Vincent the Grenadine. The caller before me from the United States have made a point thing, and I heard Cuomo yesterday, that between 40 and 80% of New York will be affected. That could be as much as 25 million people, I believe, if my math is correct, I, I hope so. I listened to a program on Saturday morning by Britain Horn out of the UK, out of England. And he said the model was saying in England that they're projecting that and nearly 260,000 people can have loss of life if they don't mitigate and deal with things properly. But if they do it right, they can bring it down to 20,000. I watched up him and asked him to confirm that information again and he reaffirmed that that's what his data was saying. I spoke to my brother as well, who's a medical practitioner in, in, in Scotland. And he said, the figures and facts I was saying was all correct. And I spoke to other authorities. I also spoke to a very senior pharmacist. And they all saying that the data that I was putting out was on or wrong, correct. It's in my understanding that one with whom you have very little um, respect for, like myself, went on a radio program last Friday night, cut up the tape, took what they wanted to have of it, and set his people to work. That is what has become the social media interpretation of what was presented. I witness news to their credit. I've carried the full context of my presentation. People want to read it from what I witness news and to what I said. Because I went into great detail and cried out for helping that at this time, our public health, senior public health people, senior medical people, must put the signs in front of the politics of the nation. They are the ones with the integrity and the credibility in the matter. And we politicians must take a distant backseat and allow the signs and meds to speak to the issues. That's the difficulty in civil being. You're hearing what the Surgeon General is saying, you're quoting him. You're hearing all over the world what the senior top people are saying in, in the United States. But in civil it's a difficult thing for the people who should speak to speak. And this is always our problem. Always, always, always a problem. You can't get an accountant, an engineer, a financial person, a social speaker, any matter. One single person speaks on any and every issue in St. Vincent, 
and that begins becomes the gospel, and the rest of us is cast aside. I heard this morning on another radio station, the couple has been alarmist. That's what he says. Well, I have nothing to gain from being alarmist. I believe I'm a sensible politician, and I wouldn't want to do anything that would be injurious to my opportunities at the polls. But this is not for me and the polls at the moment. This is what is best for Vincentian. Then what do you allow me to say because you are... I, I want to I wanna ask you a couple of questions as well, but go ahead and finish I'll making a statement. In 1979, Bing, I was just 28 years old, full and in the advantage of my military career. I was the officer in charge of this country in the Supreme eruption when 20,000 people had to be evacuated and lives were at stake. I was on the front line when the ashes were born in our epaulet. I have the experience of inhaling the ash of the Sufre. And not until I got to Hiroshima in Japan to realize that it was similar to that of the atomic bomb, where you can get um, cancer of a type looking, um, that causes bleeding to death. It may not be relevant, but I'm saying I know what it's like to be on the front line of decision maker and disaster. I'm a diploma in civil defense, and I'm a qualified officer in basic rescue and force aid. Those things are more important to me than being politician. I have a sense support interest, and that's what I've spoken to him. That's enough said. I'll take the question. Yes. Yeah. Major, because the senior medical person have given you this information, are you then saying that you well, you're not saying it, but can I interpret generally that this information is known by the persons in the Ministry of Health and they, they're withholding from giving the information to, to, the, to, the, to the country? Well, Ben, they, 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 they must have information of this kind as public knowledge. Um, anybody who's looking at the model in that's happening all over the world will, will know that. And, and in fact, I called out by name a friend of mine who went to study at the same time like myself, or Dr. Douglas Slater, who is a senior person at the um, OECS Secretariat with the responsibility for matters of this nature. Why are we not hearing from them, Bing? Why are we not hearing from them? And that's always St. Vincent's problem. When the country is in a crisis, one person speaks. Jerry George made the important point to today. Up to now, our Prime Minister has not addressed this matter as a Prime Minister. Commingling it with the matters at the Obelisk, commingling it around matters in the, within the press conference, always politicking. The opposition will do this, the opposition will do it. This is not a time for NDP or to NDP. This is a time for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And we must take a back seat. We must take a back seat and put the science and the medicine first. If I'm wrong, I'm prepared to come out to say I, I heard because I could have taken a decision to say, look, you see that? You're going to tell the people to say yourself. I ain't trusting that. Now, suppose I took that decision and it eventually happened. How do I live with myself and say that I was in a position to share with the na nation information of a kind that had been given to me because someone had the confidence in me to put it over and I declined. Hmm? If you discover subsequently that I knew that I never said that, what do you think people would think of me? Irresponsible and reckless. That's what they would have said. What, what would be your reason for bringing this information to the public, Major? Because until now, as Jerry has pointed out correctly, we are slighting the matter. You know, my brother asked me if I'm going to Parliament on Thursday. He actually said to me, you should not go to the funeral and name the particular person. Because we know at this time that everybody is shutting down and disconnecting. We have to get rid of large gatherings. I myself have not been following to the letter. I went to a funeral on Saturday. I intended to go and just sign the book and leave. Because the person there had a small funeral, so made that you can't leave. Oh, and held my ancestor well. I stayed until they got to the tribute section and I left. Friday I went to two funerals like that. And I just went and signed the book of condolence because I'm trying, not succeeding, trying to live by example. I'm speaking to all of my workers and all who are around me to disinfect, to sanitize, to clean, to do all that we can. And there is not a sufficient of message thing that people have to do any and everything at their home to make sure that we're sanitizing, disinfecting, that we're doing the social distancing, we're closing down this world. 
because we believe that we are high on the land of the blessed and we are invincible. That we only have one case, but Jerry asks, how do we know it's one? Because we have no testing means. We don't know who is asymptomatic in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The evidence says that you that 80 percent of the people um, who are asymptomatic, you can catch it from them. And it'll take you a long time until you start doing testing. We don't know. We just don't know and we're holding on to this one without having a sense of what is spread. I pray God that, that I'm wrong, that we don't get you think I want that. Ma At my age, I, I could be in the 2000. Major, some people may say that, may question, who should the nation really believe? Should they believe Major Lee Cook coming forward and saying that a senior uh, medical personnel give him this information? Or the Ministry of Health who have not said anything at all with regards to this? What well, do you say? That's their choice, Bing. It takes nothing off of me. I'm fully formed, at peace with myself, and confident in myself. I do all this what is best for St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and I've just done that here. If any, if any process, I have shocked people out of the comfort zone, then I may have succeeded. But I advise everybody, wash your hands a million times a day if you can. As often as you do something, you go to another throw, wash your hands. Wipe your doorknobs. Wipe your light, light switches. Keep your, your, your seats covered. You wear clothes in the moon about the people at the end of the day, maybe throw them in the wash. You have large crowds, keep away from them. You understand? Do all the things that the international media is advising us on because we are not getting sufficient information locally. You know, I was in a meeting with our party when we met with the official of the Ministry of Health. And one of the things I said, when you are communicating big, you have to begin to train people's air and listening. And so by this time, we should have had a program in place that we know every 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, you choose the hour, that everybody knows this will be the latest corona brief from St. Vincent, and this is official, where the chief public health officer or chief medical officer, someone of that kind, not, not, any, not any minister of government or prime minister or opposition member speaking, the technical people, and giving us that and the comparative thing and telling us what to do and what not to do. What, what, what is so special about something that's getting worse everywhere around the world? Since you've, uh, uh, since you've received this information, Major, besides bringing it to the nation's attention, have you officially given this information to the Ministry of Health and asked them whether this no, is no, correct no, or not? No, that's not my business. I, at least I haven't considered it to be my business, so I don't think it will be with you. I know there's Parliament on Thursday, and I'm sure matters of this nature are going to come up. But you see what's going to happen? Look at, this, look at how we have systems failing on Thursday. I'm sure you're going to get a ministerial statement on it from the Minister of Farm Health. You know what the provision and the Prime Minister will also speak to it. You know what the, the, the rules of the Parliament are? That you can't ask questions of a ministerial statement. Nor can the opposition present ministerial statements. So how, how much wider would St. Vincent and the be? When the system itself doesn't even accommodate or facilitate that, um, that, that kind of for me. That's, that's where we are being. Yes. This information is, is serious information, if proven to be correct, Major. What policies would you like to see the government or the ministry or the health professionals put in place to combat what you have presented? Well, I can't say it different or better than Jerry has said you. We have never had a time in the world in which countries and people have disconnected anywhere with area. We haven't seen this in our lifetime, Jerry. Have we ever seen something like this? Where whole countries are closing down? where the great United States of America cannot get on top of this situation, where they are calling out their military, the military that are designed to fight wars, to apply the, the, the preeminent logistics and manpower, to go and uh, establish field hospitals that, 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 in, that, that, in, that bring into being laws that are only used at the time when a country is at war to come and get factories to make masks. How many people, how many masks are available in St. Vincent Jerry? Let me take some basic questions. You have masks there for all your staff at work? No. Do you have gloves for all of them? No. America Trinidad is trying to think, do something with 400 more ventilators. My brother was on a program last week. St. Vincent, I believe, has about seven. Probably three or four down the hospital, maybe one or two. Oh boy, sorry, I call this coming. All right, Major. Well, well you, you I, I want to... What, 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 what I'm saying, there are basic things, there are basic things being, very basic things that we should be telling our people now. And a lot of people will have to be provided for these. 
because the other man in the can't do it for himself or herself. Major, how do you rate the, the government's handling of this 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 matter, this issue? It's poor. Poor? Poor. Why? Because, look you, look at the call you had before mine, Jerry. Um, um, bing, um, bing, bing, bing. Where a lady is asking if the coronavirus is similar to a hurricane, where it'll come and blow it. So she locked and she house maybe overnight or, or for a week. It will blow past, it will come out here free again. You listen to the world news. We have been told we don't know how long it's going to be. Four months, six months, eight months. Or a year and a half. And, and the residual effects of it. We are still at the stage thing where we decide if carnival can take place in June. It is obvious in terms of what's happening all around us. We can't have carnival. Look at how look at how wrong we have been being. Just listen to what made just don't forget about the politics. We were contemplating giving this council of incense to travel to neighboring islands. When the neighboring islands are, are contemplating closing their borders. Closing along their national airlines, closing their airports, closing their seaports. And we were offering people to get a ticket to go to their islands. We're closing the door now. Look what happened two weeks ago, Bing. We're sending 19 nurses to England where they have acute shortage of people on the front line. When it's at the very time, we would need more people here on our front line. And you know what we do? We go and borrow two from Cuba and then and then for a doctor. When we had our own we say, boy, see this, we can't send out anybody now. In America, they're taking pre-med students and sending them out to work as if they're doctors because there's, there's the shortage in the hand. This, 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 that's the difference because how we're going in the wrong direction. It, 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 it's a serious it, indictment. And we're sending a message that I am going to eat. And look on, come on, man. Come on. Come on, big. There's a bigger picture. That's not from Major. That's what the, that's what the Prime Minister step up to the plate. Um, so Major. Dan Tobago has had joint meetings between the pre Prime Minister and the leader of the opposition. Joint press conference in, 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 in St. Lucia between Shastane and um, um, the, the, the leader of the opposition. All over the world, they have a close rank between both sides of the house. American Republicans and, and Democrats are doing that. All over the world. When I asked her, the, the Queen of England had to come up and give a statement on the coronavirus. Did you, did you hear the Queen doing that? Just moved to her country home. What, what, why can't these segments be so strong and compelling around the world, but not us in St. Vincent? Forget about the figures now, whether it's 2,000 or two or 20, or whether it's 30 to 50,000, or whether it's 5 to 10. The point is we need to do more than we're doing and we're not doing anything. That's the point. That's the bottom line. Major Leacock, yes, um, a question for you. We're told that persons coming out of the US, the UK, and EU to self-isolate themselves. Do you think that we should have a facility for these persons rather than hoping that they stay in quarantine and follow those guidelines? I clearly do. Because um, we, we know that people who have been in quarantine before here in St. Vincent and Grenadines have broken the quarantine, especially when they didn't put police security. And in any event, in some cases, we are exposing more and more people who have you know, my sister, let, let, me, let, let me let me let me let let's stretch it out. If the disaster is going as the, as the way it is, do the people who are at the gas stations have protective, as they call it, P PEs, personal protective equipment? Do they have masks? Do they have gloves? Do they have buying suits? Do they have any protective to keep the gas stations open and going? Do the supermarkets people have that to keep us going? If this thing is really moving the way? We are not making the preparation. That's the point. How many, can you walk from Kingston on by a mask? Can you? Do you know of any place that has a mask in town at the moment? Can you get protective gloves in Kingston at the moment? Who is addressing these issues? With the gravity that they should be addressed. I'm not being alarmed. It's just for a second. I walk, um, Bing, are you there? Yes, we're here, we're here. I walk in an industry that provides services. And the head office comes to me, Bing, and they said to me, these are the list of questions we have to have you answer to know if we can continue retaining your service. In the event that is a contagion effect in St. Vincent and the Grenadine, one, or in the back branch, one, are your staff equipped 
for content to provide us with a service? Have you been training your staff and bringing them up to a level? Make sure you do that. I now provide a service in which I have to make sure that my people at the staff at the gate are cleaning the door handles, wiping the counters you have service, wiping the fridge door, doing this in the kitchen, following this, the, all the sorts of janitorial protocols to make sure that these people do not bring their domestic things at home or the customers do not bring them to the bank or the bank staff don't transmit it to the customers. Making sure that we have as tight an environment as possible to keep this coronavirus out. How many people are stepping up with their protocols, including yourself and, and your friend in there at home? How many of you? So I have had to answer them and say, well, look, I have A, B, C, D, F, but I don't have bio suits. Are you in a position to help me? And they're reporting to me today to let me know they'll provide me with bio suits so that my people who are working for them will be properly equipped to service them. You, you get what I'm saying to you? Yes. That's, that's where we're at. And that's how serious organizations function. I have to call in my people and I sit them down in meetings and train them and talk to them and protect them. Because if one of them is sick, I'll be sick. If I get sick, my other parliamentary colleagues will be sick. I don't know what is happening to my own prime minister. He's been up and down the, the wall from January now to March and April. He's been laser fan, the people he's been interacting in. How do I know that I can stand and sit next to him? It's part of meeting on, on, on Thursday. Are we taking the lesson of the rest of the world? Are we going to have social distancing? Is the, is the um, strangers gallery going to be business as usual? Are people just coming from where they are for vaccine sit on the gallery? Or are we going to space out the parliament that we have the three feet or three three yards or whatever the distance it is from each other? Are we making making um, amends? To, yeah, you, you, are, you, you and me. Yes. yes. We are doing it. We're just going on it as as merry merry business. That can't be right. I'm not. I, I, I don't. I'm, I'm, I have my issues on and up now because I'm speaking to you. But it's, it should be done because I have people in my vehicle driving. I shouldn't even have more than, more, more than what I have here. But I shall be allowed the free air to go to the circulate and having to be recirculating the air inside the vehicle with those of us who are in here. They don't know if I'm affected. They don't know, I don't know if they are affected. But that's where we are being. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I have an event tonight again um, in, in my constituency. But, 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 so then you, jail for a guy. but you, you then personally are not that. following those, 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 those um, rules and guidelines then? <laughs> Because it's extremely difficult thing. I'm not saying it was only perfect that we can strive for it. But you're calling on the government to, to do it as well. That's right. I'm just saying that all of us that all of us try and step up. Because it is extremely difficult for us to do it. Unless we go the route of it where there's a total shutdown everybody in the home. So why hmm? don't you lead by example and you, shut you down some that. of your no, you, you answer you answer that because I'm giving you a practical and pragmatic thing and you said to me back in, in a rhetorical sense. I am saying I am working towards that. And I've sung the bells. But I'm saying unless there's a total shutdown in the country, it's difficult. I are you calling for a total shutdown, Major? Would you like I to see our borders I, closed? What, what what would you like to see? What would you like to have happen? Well then I can't I can't ignore the complexity of the decision. Trinidad has closed theirs, they probably feel that they're sufficiently self-contained. Jamaica has closed theirs. Barbados just made a decision of a kind. Grenada. Grenada, has, Grenada has done something. But you must know how vulnerable we are um, in our society, in people coming and going up. But it seems to me that sooner or later, if we don't make the decision, the decision will be made for us. That's why I see, because in any event, if everybody is closed from you, then you, you can't go nowhere. So you, you are being closed by them, rather than by yourself. But it's, it's something that seems to that can happen. It is a very fluid and dynamic and ordinary thing. Something of the like you have never seen in St. Vincent. And, and what about an economic stimulus for, for the country? What would you like to see done? By the way, Pastor, Dr. Richards has just given us permission because we're using his time to continue with you. He thinks that what you say is important. Um, what would you like to see in terms of a, a, a stimulus for, for the country, Major? Well, I can't do that one off it, but I have given it a lot of thought because I addressed it even before we got to this stage. One thing I can say at the moment, straight off the bat, is that global challenges must be met with global responses. So St. Vincent can't respond to something that's impacting it as a consequence of a global phenomenon by short-term domestic solutions. So we have to have regional and international approaches to do what we're doing because we don't have those monies to do those things for, for the stimulus. 
So I know it will have to be on the fiscal side because we could do very little on the monetary side as America could. You see, America did the monetary thing to reduce interest rates. Our central bank probably can't do that. But since it doesn't have a monetary policy, in isolation of what is done by the OECD and the European Central Bank. But we can do a lot of fiscal things. But we'll have to also think of how we can um, revive and reform because whatever we do, in the short term, we are going to be impacted. America, for example, is a consumer-driven economy. And that's why their program is directed at us to put more money and float the average man on the street. We are not as consumer-driven as the United States of America and, and a credit economy, so we have to find all other mechanisms. But there are a lot of people who have difficulty, even before this has hit us, much more to when it comes on board. What's going to happen to the Western Union money? What is going to happen to the money, grand money? What's going to happen to the proverbial Christmas barrels? If all of our families who are there in America and in England are not working and have to um, pull the neck in, cut and contrive, it's going to impact us. Do, do you think it will be a security issue for us as well, too, Major, if, if less and less persons have the ability to take care of themselves? The security issue? Yes. Well, it's a, good, it's a very good question by you, Bing, because, you know, just last year, for example, I think we had that um, trade winds exercise. It, was, it is what it's called. It was reported in the military forces from all of the other islands. And we are depending on some of what we call in the region. What do we call it? The regional security system. Isn't that so? Yes. Which is comprised of units from all and each and every island. As we are now being, with every island having its own demand and a shortage of its own security personnel, nobody is in a position to send help to anybody else. Jamaica can't send soldiers here, eh? or Barbados. America itself is busy. Maybe the Southern Command may have enough that to send for us. But we'll have to look inside to see what we could do to help ourselves until help reaches us. But then, you know, we have to take some comfort because we want to be poor, pure gloom and doom. We are a resilient people. That's one thing you know about our people. We are people who can, are, are an adaptive people. And I believe if we provide, and this is the critical word that this time has needed, and I'm sure Pastor Richard will agree with me, leadership. If we provide effective leadership, we will improve our national response. And that is where those who are the pinnacle of governance, Prime Minister, Leader of the Opposition, Governor General, Speaker of the House, they are the ones who will have to drive the process. I am one of the post holders like yourself, who will be in that vineyard. Major, I want to thank you very much. Thank you very, very, very much this morning. Um, thank you. you. I see you getting some love on, on the WhatsApp, uh, on my phone, and, and also some, some on the, the station's machine as well. Thank you very much. Is there anything else you want to add before you leave, though? No, I just want to continue to a good family friend. You know? <laughs> Boy, I, I'm, I'm good family friend on both sides, it seems like. I'm family friend two weeks. I'm family. I don't know. I don't show. <laughs> all these families, all these families, boy. <laughs> you, don't, you, you don't show. I don't show. <laughs> you don't show. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Right. Thanks for calling. Thank you, man. Look after yourself. You have your own vulnerabilities. I have mine, and we have to be extra, extra careful. And sometimes yeah. people don't understand when you're passionate, the reason why you have to be so passionate. Thank you very much, Major. Thank you very much for calling. Thank you very much. I was Major Leacock. Um, I see the phone lines going crazy. Should we take one or two? One. One. One only. Okay, we're going to take home, one only. Baby. Yeah. Go, okay, well, good. That one dropped out, so I'm not going to take that one. I've been trying to play all morning long the. the uh, what's it? Yeah, Tyra Perry. I want to thank, let's thank, thank Dr. Richards for allowing. Thank you so, so, so much, Pastor. Good morning, caller. You're the final caller. Good morning, how are you? I'm all right, I'm all right. I think Lee Cock is being unfair to the health workers in Tillman's and the Grenadines. Mm -hmm. Even the ordinary men on the street know they have to sanitize, wash their hands, the basic hygiene. Mm -hmm. Even a man that cannot read and write right now on the street, he knows that. I go in various supermarkets and tongue, sanitize all my coats, all these places. Even the man on the street who cannot read knows that he has to wash his hands, sanitize and everything. All the basic stuff. It's on the media. It's all over. So I think it's very unfair to, the, to say that the people at the ministry of the health are doing a good work. Okay. Thank you, man. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're not taking any more. Um, let, let, me, let, let us just wrap up. 
with this thing from Tara Perry. I, it, I think it's it's appropriate to wrap up on this one. It's not something that we, you'll usually hear on, on, on Boom, much less, well, on OMG, much less Boom. Um, let's all thank you very much to Dr. Richards for allowing um, us to continue with that segment just now. Um, thank you very much. You'll get him tomorrow morning. Yes, You're coming tomorrow sure. morning and, and update us. I want to hear from him. What is he doing? With, with his church and his congregation with regards to social distancing. Um, what, what will be done from your level, Dr. Richards? I want to hear from you tomorrow morning. All right? Um, until tomorrow morning. Until tomorrow. Until tomorrow. His Tyra Perry, he put out this challenge to the world, and the world has taken up on it. To make us all feel a little bit better. Um, I'm going to start this song, and then I want all of y'all to add to it, all the musicians out there. All the singers out there, change the key, take it up. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can do this. <clears throat> He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 Where you at? Y'all had something. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. Sister, in his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. All right, how about a little something to try to make us all feel a little bit better? Um, I'm going to start this song and then I want all of y'all to add to it, all the musicians out there, all the singers out there, change the key, take it up. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can do this. <clears throat> He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 Where you at? Y'all had something. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. Sister, in his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got the believers and unbelievers. In his hands, he's got the believers and non-believers. In his hands, he's got the believers and non-believers. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, sister. In his hand, I promise you, he's got you and me, sister. In his hand, he's got the whole world, the whole world in his hand. Dios tiene el mundo entero 
en sus manos el mundo entero, en sus manos tiene el mundo entero, en sus manos tiene todo en su poder. He's got the little bitty babies in his hands. He's got the little bitty babies in his hands. He's got the little bitty babies in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. 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 My God has got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world, y'all. In his hands, my God has got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got you and me in his hands. Yeah, Lord. He's got the little bitty babies. In his hands, he's got the little bitty babies. In his hands, he's got the little bitty babies. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got all who are worried in his hands. He's got all who are worried in his hands. He's got all who are worried in his hands. He's got the whole world 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 in his hands. He's got all of his children in his hands. He's got all of his children in his hands. He's got all of his children. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's even got you and me in his hands. He's got you and me. In his hands, he's got you and me. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah.
yes he does we come in by the blood of jesus the whole world oh, oh we have nothing to be afraid of the whole world is his hand oh oh oh, oh we brothered by the blood of jesus we lighten up the morning, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Oh, OMG in the morning.